Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Begin Strong Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin. I'm a husband and a father of two, a non lit fitness fanatic who will be your guide in this crazy but empowering space for beginners and especially for busy parents. In this episode, we will be talking about things that personally help me to gain size and build muscle. And as always, it'll be a mix of my thoughts and experiences as well as some evidence provided by science. And just because you are a female, male, anybody that's listening to this podcast is welcome to take some notes and some key takeaways from this episode. It does not matter if you are already lifting or if you're just planning to lift from now on. I hope everyone will have something that they can use by the end of this episode so that is my goal but anyway so happy to reach this point we are now episode three and i do hope you are enjoying this podcast and let me know how else i can help you out by leaving a review rate this podcast and yeah let's dive right in Okay, by the way, a quick shout out to my mother, Mama, because you have been really, really good at following the protocols and my recommendations. I'm glad that you received a lower result of your blood markers. So that means you got a better result than last year. I'm very proud of you. Keep up the good work and we're going to keep on continuing with your journey. So if you're listening to this podcast, keep trying. And the next goal probably is to make my dad <laughs> to make my dad join the fitness game. He's still on that mindset that he just wants to do whatever he wants. But I think I think we have a chance. Anyway, guys, we are episode three and this is about a beginner series that I'm releasing together with the other episodes. And this is about training and nutrition in general for somebody who wants to start. Either you're a skinny dude just like me when I was a teenager or you are a bit overweight, plus size. Every episode is there to help you. Okay, so if you're listening to this one, of course, by the title, you are a skinny, a skinny individual or you just want to gain more weight. You're not specifically that lean or that skinny, but you still need some tips for how to gain some muscle or how to gain some weight. Anyway, we will be breaking down this podcast into five key principles or guidelines the first one being not eating enough to simplify this podcast for you let's talk about calories first so calorie is just a unit of measurement so don't believe anyone that says this diet calories are more beneficial and this keto diet this plant-based diet or this intermittent fasting diet that i'm doing changes the way calories are doing for you run the other way escape don't look back don't believe these people a calorie is a unit of measurement just like how you measure speed with kilometers per hour you don't change a kilometer every car uses the same metrics just the same as everyone can use calorie not all calories are equal They keep saying, I disagree. Not all calories make you feel the same. That's true. But then again, it's still a calorie. The obvious, most obvious answer for this bulking weight gain episode is you need to eat enough and you need to be in a surplus of calories. So we expend calories. Our body uses calories and our body takes in calories in the form of food and basically the rule if you want to gain some weight you have to be in a caloric surplus 
meaning you eat or you take in way more than you burn. So we're going to cut that short and make it simple for now. And I'll just give you a few tips on how to properly calculate your calories. There's many ways to do it. There's not one method that's effective. I'll give you just an example because this is just a short episode for you guys. I recommend downloading apps Carbon made by Dr. Lane Norton and Macro Factor that I found out uh, by watching Jeff Nippert. Both people, both those two individuals are very, very evidence-based and very much into science. And so that you will get very accurate results for both the apps the longer you subscribe to it the more discount that they have but anyway the goal for the app is to track your calories intuitively or the algorithm is adjusting weekly based on your activity level your lifestyle it's basically a coach in inside your cell phone it's very very important that you track your food and follow what the app specifically says but i guarantee to anyone listening i guarantee if you're 100 percent honest with what you eat and what you put you measure your food you track your food you put it in the app and the app tells you what's next you will get results i like carbon more just because of simplicity so if we were to put carbon and macro factor as a brand of a smartphone i would say carbon is an iphone and macro factor is an android so just more details with the macro factor app okay the next advice that i have for you is your food structure so By structure, I mean how to fit the foods in your lifestyle and the timing of when you eat your food. It's based on what you do every single day. And that's basically your lifestyle. So I think you should fix and it will change. It will vary depending on what your work is, what your family setting is, your relationship and what you prefer to eat. But as a tip for gaining weight and building muscle, I suggest you eat as much meals as you can throughout the day. The reason why is, let's say if you're eating 3,000 calories for your gaining weight calories, how many people can sit down and eat 1,000 calories three times a day? I don't think I've met a lot of people that had the same appetite as me. For me, I didn't have a problem. I don't know. I just got used to it. I think my stomach expanded as well when I got bigger. So naturally, now I have more appetite. If you are not a big eater, then I suggest you split your meals, multiple meals a day. And that meal could depend however you want it to be just as long as you hit your caloric target for the day. For my lifestyle, for example, my lunch starts at 12 o'clock because my work starts at 12 o'clock. So we have lunch first. And then after that, we have a long time before the next meal because it's 12 to 7. And then I am basically going home from 7 until 9 o'clock. So you got like six hours so i get pretty hungry that's why i can eat like a thousand calories when i go home nothing wrong with eating at night don't believe those internet websites that says uh uh, you shouldn't eat rice after five o'clock we are way behind when it comes to especially philippines we're we're way behind when it comes to the research and like what's actually true or not it depends on you so that's what happens to me I split my meals into four, actually, when I wake up. And then one one more meal just before going to work. And then lunchtime and then nighttime. And sometimes I actually do a little bit more of a snacking before I sleep. Just a light meal. 
just before sleeping. Number three that I suggest you do is choose calorically dense food. If you compare an an apple versus like milk, so you could either eat the calories from the apple or you could drink the calories from milk. Now, they can reach a certain amount of calories depends on how many apples you eat or how much milk you drink. But the point is, if you do the calorically dense food, in this case, it's the milk because you don't feel the volume of the food, but you get the same calories, then you can eat more. So I typically switch to more liquids. I in, I ingest more liquids into my diet when I'm bulking and I switch to more more volume foods with less calories when I'm cutting. In the morning when I'm I'm not bulking, I usually eat like oatmeal. I microwave the oatmeal, put some cinnamon and I don't put a lot of like sweeteners, honey, not a lot of calories in there. As opposed to when I'm bulking, I'm eating granolas. Granolas are very high in calories. In case you didn't know that, even if I get the low-fat, low-sugar granola, it's still higher than the oatmeal. It's still higher than the, the rice in the morning. It's very high. So granolas are my go-to. I mix like granolas and fruit and like a protein shake, vanilla and milk. And yeah, I mix it with like oatmeal toast cereals as well. Just random things that has a high calorie value but i'm still gonna get hungry after two hours because like i said i still eat before lunch like a pre-lunch meal and sometimes i do like a gainer shake wherein i put a bunch of fruit and and honey and peanut butter mixed with protein powder in a blender because it's liquid calories it's easily digestible and it has a, a large amount of calories so that I can still eat. So yeah, eat calorically dense food. Another pro tip for this is just add fat to most of your meals. Add like olive oil to your salad on the side. Add extra olive oil, extra oil when you cook your eggs. Cause they, they really hide, like oils are really crazy when it comes to dieting because they creep up. They, you don't really notice oils. They don't take much space in your stomach so you could easily overeat them so just be careful and still track your oil intake but i suggest putting as much like butter in your toast small things like that will add up and again peanut butter in their smoothies very yummy and very high in calories clean calories because these are from nuts and as well as healthy snacks like macadamia nuts. That's my go-to healthy snack. Because you don't really want to stuff yourself with just a bunch of processed food. Because you might overeat. There's just a ceiling. There's a limit of how much calories you're supposed to eat. Because otherwise gaining weight and building muscle. It's going to turn into just like getting fat. So you don't really want to just go all in. And that gave me an idea. Maybe I should talk about dirty bulk versus clean bulk and what's like the, the mistakes being done there. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So we have already three things. First one is eat enough calories, be in a surplus. Second, food structure, like your frequency, how many times you eat or the timing based on your lifestyle. And number three is choose calorically dense foods. I think I'm going to end the part one. This is going to be a part one so that you can really focus on the details of this episode. And we will be back with part two for the other two tips that I have for you. All right. So this has been fun. Again, my name is Kevin. If you enjoyed this podcast and if it helped you out, please leave a rating on whatever platform you are listening at and give me a review. Write a comment. I'm on Instagram, Begin Strong Podcast with Kevin. And as well as YouTube, it's me, Kevin. It's me, KVN. That's my handle. So I'll see you guys there. Thanks so much. 
Peace.